One of the other questions that come up regarding Yalav Yavu is benching, Birchas Hamazon. What about if today you're having a Suda and you bench and you leave out Yalav Yavu? Does one have to repeat the Birchas Hamazon? Not if you started the next Baruch. Jeff, you're, you're saying, uh, I would you're say, saying no to what I was saying and no to... No, no, me. I think it's what the bencher uh, says. Alan said it's better than what I was going to say. I was going to say no, but Alan gives a finer point to it. You can do it if you haven't started the next bracha. So you're in agreement then? Yes. Sorry, what, about agreeing with me? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I got a problem. Exactly. <laughs> He's taking yeah. Bruce's spot now. <laughs> so, so it goes like this. Um, the luck, let's, let's give you the principle. And then once you have the principle, you still have to know some facts, but at least we know where we're going. Mm -hmm. So the, principle, the general claw is, the question you have to ask yourself, am I obligated to eat a meal now? If I'm obligated to eat a meal, and I leave out Ritzay, Yalova Yavo, so then the luck is, I have to go back and repeat Birka Samazun. If, I, if it's only optional, or even praiseworthy to eat a meal, but it's not mandatory, so then I do not have to um, repeat benching. Your, your question was with respect to Rosh Chodesh. Correct. So, with yes, respect but Rosh, to which it's not, the meal is not mandatory. But Rosh Chodesh could be on a Yom Tov. No, but that, then, they, then you got the laws of Yom Tov involved, but you're higher than the laws mm -hmm. of Rosh Chodesh. But if you remembered... You, <clears throat> Oh, right. Right now, I'm just asking regular Rosh Chodesh. I'm asking like today. Yeah. I think right. the question is, no is a Suda you eating a Suda Mitzvah for yeah, that right. day? Yes or no? You must ask what a Suda Mitzvah means. But right, no, it still could be even... Mitzvah for that day. I, I wouldn't say a Suda Mitzvah, right, because I'm saying... There's no Suda Mitzvah for Rosh Chodesh. No, right, so maybe you can make it into a Suda Mitzvah by having Divri Torah and Zemiros, but still doesn't mean you have so to go back to the meal. Then it's a, yeah, but still. Oh, eat on a Rosh Chodesh, you could ask. You know, like they say in Hanukkah, like the difference between Hanukkah and Purim, Purim, you're obligated to have a Suda. It's a discussion whether you actually have the bread or not. Obviously, you have the many as you do. But Purim, you have a Chi of Suda. Hanukkah, there is no obligation to have a meal, even though it's praiseworthy because mm -hmm. the famous answer of the Lavush that Purim was a, we were saved from physical, from Haman, and therefore we celebrate in a physical way. But Hanukkah is more of a spiritual, spiritual celebration, Hallel near Hanukkah. So, that, so the Ramah writes, since you're not obligated to have a meal on Hanukkah, so you should have Zmiros, Vitishbacho, say Divri Torah, and turn it into a Sudas Mitzvah. So this, responding so to Jeff, that, that, not just, that even if it's a Sudas Mitzvah, doesn't mean you had to have the Sudas oh, Mitzvah. Oh, in that case, you still wouldn't go there. Like, right, exactly. Uh, There's what we call a Kiyam HaMitzvah and a Chiyav. Oh, like Rav Moshe writes about living in Eretz Yisrael today. Uh -huh. That is a machok as Ramban and Rambam, or we'll call it that anyway. The Ramban is clear, Nechmanenes, is an obligation to live in Israel even today. And the Rambam is silent on the matter, meaning he doesn't count it in his 613 mitzvahs. So anytime the Rambam is silent on the matter, you always have among the commentators a dispute from one end to the other. Is it a fundamental dispute? or a mere technical dispute. What I mean by that is, does, does the Rambam fundamentally agree with, agree with the Ramban? Do we have to come up to some reason why he didn't count it as one of the 613? Or by the fact he didn't count it, it clearly disagrees. So that's a, you have different, different opinions in the Rambam. So what the Avni Nezer writes, he says it's just a technical distinction. Really, he agrees with the Rambam that there's an obligation to live in Israel. I said, so why doesn't he count it? Because he counts it. The Rambam gives us his principles before he writes the 613 commandments. He tells us the rules of why, because everyone agrees there's a lot more than 613 commandments because you have many of the different commentators counting mitzvahs. They all end up at 613 because that's what the Gemara Makas tells us. But everyone agrees that it's just a matter of which ones you're going to count, and they give different reasons why they count some and not the other. So the Avni Nezer says, the Rambam already counted it. Where did he count it? There's a mitzvah that when the Jewish people entered the land of Israel, and he had the seven nations who were worshipping idols living there, hachrim tachrim, there's a mitzvah to, to um, conquer the land and throw them out. So obviously the Avni Nezer is a mitzvah to conquer the land 
throw them out and then move to Toronto, Maybe move to L.A., move to New York. Throw them out, not destroy whatever, them. Whatever, you know, whatever. I'm just, I'm not, that's not my topic now, so I'm just being, <laughs> using general usage. <laughs> but we could discuss exactly what is permitted to do with them. Perhaps destroy them, but the different ways of destroying people that could, you know, and the different ways of war. You could give them a chance. And that's also <laughs> you give them a chance to leave different types of war. You don't, you always want to give the enemy a way out. Mm -hmm. You don't close all four e e exit routes. You leave one open to give everyone an opportunity to sneak away quietly. So they point out that so, therefore, so that's a discussion in the Rambam. So Ramosh has a compromise opinion. I'm not saying he says it's a compromise. I'm just, I'm just being descriptive here. He has an opinion in between. He says, today there's no obligation to live in Israel. But anyone who chooses to live in Israel, of course he gets a key of mitzvah in our Torah. So I'm just pointing out there's a middle ground between being obligated, even though you might not be an obligation to do something, but once you do it, you still get the same mitzvah. It's a mitzvah kiyum. It's you know, kind of like the conditional mitzvah of sitzis. If you're wearing a four-cornered garment, yeah. you, you fulfill and you're obligated to put on sitzis. But if I'm not wearing a four-cornered garment, I'm not, I'm not obligated in sitzis. I might, I might be obligated to put myself in a situation where I should be able, so that's a separate discussion. But the point being is, so even if you turn into a suit that's mitzvah, it wouldn't necessarily make it an obligation to do it. But getting back to Rosh Chodesh, so we asked if you forgot to say Yalo V'yavo today, if you're having your big breakfast, lunch, or some, or if people are going to a big dinner tonight and they're going to wash, and it's still going to be Rosh Chodesh because the dinner, because sunset's not to about nine, and the dinner starts about five, six. So therefore, if you choose to eat bread tonight and you forget to say Yalo V'yavo, so. The, again, the, the rule is, as we said, if you have to eat, you have to go back. If you don't have to eat, so the question is, but do you do we have a chi of Sudan Rosh Chodesh? So the luck is, when it comes to Shabbos, is there an obligation to eat a Sudan Shabbos? Yes. Three of them. Yeah. Three of them. So oh, two. Oh, two. Oh, two. Well, one two. 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 Okay. Third one, there's no obligation to eat bread. So let's go see. Let's go. So Friday night, if you get to say Ritzay and Davening, do you have to go back or not? Yes. Yeah. yeah, since you have an obligation to have a meal. Again, as Alan was referring to, there is a place, if you remember it enough, you can, you can insert a harachaman. But assuming, I'm assuming you don't, you're not going to do that. You remember after you finish benching already. There are ways of still making up while you're in. I'm talking about once you already finished benching and you realize you forgot Ritze, so you have to repeat benching. What about Shabbos lunch? Same. 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 What about Shalashudis? No. You don't have to have three well, days. But don't you have to have three meals? What? We're obligated for three meals, but that but meal we you, don't you have to have bread. You don't have to bench. You don't have to wash. Right, so therefore we know there's a luck of Shalashudis of three meals. Right. Uh -huh. In fact, you know, some say it's the most important out of the three because the other two you eat because you're hungry. The third one you're showing because you're eating it because it's Shabbos and you're supposed to have a Shabbos. That's why it's called Shalashudis. Why is it called? The third meal is Magala on the first two, exactly. as opposed to calling it, you know, like we don't call it the first meal, second meal, but the <laughs> Shalash Shudas shows that your intention for all the meals will be shame Shabbos, but either way. So the luck is, you don't have to go back, but why? You have to have three meals on Shabbos. So that's the reason is, there's a machlokas among the Rishonim, what is required for Shalash Shudas. So everyone agrees, Lechad Chila, and according to some people, even more than Lechad Chila, you have to wash for the third meal, no different than the other two. And the according to that opinion, not la halacha, but their opinion based on logic, then you, according to that opinion, you would, you would have to go back for shalosh shudas as well. However, there are other rishonim who say one can fulfill the mitzvah of shalosh shudas through other means besides having the full meal. So you know, mizonos, preferably if not having you know chips and soda, whatever they serve. And, you know, there, there's, a, there's one opinion that says even Talmud Torah, by learning, which, mm -hmm. which Rav Chaim didn't like, he says, but Rav Chaim says you could shrug up the Torah, but you can't shrug up the grapefruit. In other words, people didn't like the fact um, that um, to rely on Shalosh Shudas by having a Sudas Torah instead of, of having a Sudas meal. Not that they didn't like learning Torah, but they didn't think that was a good substitute. So 
The lach is so since it's a machok is we shown him whether you have to have bread. You have to have a third meal. There's nothing to talk about. What constitutes this third meal? Whether you need bread or not is a discussion among the Rishonim. So since there are those Rishonim who say that you fulfill your mitzvah with having a meal even without bread, hence we pass in the that if you forget say at the third meal, you would not have to repeat benching. But based on those opinions that say you can fulfill your Sudhish Shrishis without having bread. Jeff? You know, I was just thinking, uh, if, if assuming that when you don't have bread, you should still at least have Mazonos. Now, right. even in Mazonos, there's an extra thing for uh, uh, Shabbos. Correct. I'll so maybe one could say because of that, you have to remember Shabbos however you have a third meal. Remember... Uh, yes. yeah, but the question is rep- repeating if you don't remember. Yeah, no. I, mean, I mean that. You, you have to... It, the insertion is obligatory. Correct. It, correct. In, the al, no, no, in the Alha Miksha that Jeff is referring to, it's called Me'ain Shalosh. Yes. That's a machok as we've shown him whether that's the right. So going back is that benching... Oh. Is a mitzvah in Torah, ve'achalta v'savata uve'rachta, and it's one of the few biblical blessings which are biblical. And even that, even that, every time you bench doesn't mean it's biblical. How could you bench and not be biblical? How could you have a non-biblical benching? The Torah says ve'achalta v'savata uve'rachta. When I eat bread, I have to bench. How can well, I have a non... It's in a kebeah. It's in a kebeah. It's a bit more... Right. So, that's, so as the Torah tells us, v'achalta v'savata. You have to be satisfied. So again, what, that's a separate shia. What's the definition of being satisfied? How much you have to eat? But if you eat only a kezayis of bread, an olive size, oh, yeah. and, and you're not... So therefore, you're only obligated in benching midrabanan. So therefore... There are times you're only obligated to be drawn, but benching itself, if you have the appropriate amount, you're chayiv min Torah. So, the Rishonim say as well, al hamechya, according to many, is also biblical. That's the same status of benching. Mm-hmm. And Jeff's alluding to that in the al hamechya, we have special insert. We have on Rosh Chodesh, for that matter. We have on all the holidays, I guess. Except, you know, usually you usually don't find one on Yom Kippur, but perhaps when someone, that's a separate question, when one is chayiv, yeah. one who is obligated to eat on Yom Kippur, but Tisha B'av, so that's a discussion whether they add, um, they make special, you know, inserts of that, but that's a separate cheer. So, but they, so they point out, so, but either way, you're just saying, they, there is mention of it in al but it's not... Even if you say that you only need mazonos, so even on Alhamishia. Right. Yeah, okay. No, right, but, and, but, and I guess, right, that's why you'd be, you'd be more hard-pressed on Bori Nefeshas. Yeah. But even, yeah. right, that wouldn't work if we assume also be the, if you don't have bread, but you, if you don't have cake, but you have other things, it's also okay. And there is no, in the Bori Nefeshas, there is no mention of Shabbos. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. So therefore, yeah. that wouldn't be the reason, but it is true that we have to mention it. So that's why, even though, so Friday night, so even though we have to have three meals, but there is a difference to the halacha, b'dieve that is. L'chat chila, everyone agrees, if you ask me, do I have to have bread at Shalosh Shittas, the answer is yes. It's only someone who's so full from, um, you know, especially in the winter months, when you're so full, for you, come, you, you go from lunch to mincha, and you, it's hard for you to eat, and you don't want to have, you know, achila, it's kasa, get sick, so then there's room not to, but l'chat chila, everyone agrees you should have a third meal by washing, but the bad post facto, the Eved, if you have mizonas or less than that, you still fulfill your mitzvah of shalosh shuras. And that's the and the biggest proof is in the halacha we pass in that if you don't by the first two meals, if you get rid, say you, you got to repeat. By the third meal, you don't have to repeat. So we see al pi halacha. There's a difference in terms of at least the bid the Eved. Uh, that's and the core of the halacha. Is always on the bidiyev, it's not the lechat chilas. You can't tell much on looking at what the lechat chilas is. I mean, okay. how you practice should be the lechat chilas, but if you're trying to figure out and analyze the halacha, now you have to go to the bidiyev to find out, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the gedarim of what, uh, you know, obligations. So that's Shabbos. Yon, what about Yantif? Let's say Pesach, Sukkis, I forget Yalav or Yavo in my benching. And again, I'm, I'm finished benching. Am I obligated to eat, um, to bench again? I would think so. Same yeah. Thing. Same thing. I would also, again, since yeah. you're obligated to have a meal on yantif, sudas yantif. So again, whenever you, the trick is to know when you're obligated to have, first you have to know the first principle. 
If you're obligated to eat this meal with bread, you're chayev to bench again, then you have to figure, no, that's the principle, then you have to know that specifically every meal you're eating, whether it's mandatory or optional. So on Yantav as well, the halacha is, you have to repeat benching. The only, there's only one, on one of the Yom Tov, there's a discussion on Rosh Hashanah. On Rosh Hashanah, and some say, if you forget to say Yalav V'yavo on benching on Rosh Hashanah, so there's this discussion among the post game whether you have to go back. Why should Rosh Hashanah be different than, let's say, Sukkot, Pesach, Shavuos, Jeff? Yom Hadin, so it's right. Simcha is... Well, but then, um, along those lines, but not because it's Yom Hadin, because it's Yom Hadin, so they quote an old practice of some people used to fast on Rosh Hashanah. Uh-huh. And they quote okay. from Ezra, so there's a discussion, we don't pass them, we pass can you have an obligation to eat, and it's a mitzvah of simcha, albeit it's toned down, as the Rambam writes, it's not a day of simcha yisera. It's not a day of overt, open. We're not sitting there running around dancing because we're, our life is being judged, but it's still a day of simcha. We have a sudas mitzvah. We, we dress nicely. It's, it's still a yantah. So therefore, since there are those um, earlier gonim, rishonim, who had to talk about a minute of fasting on Russia, so already one could discuss, so then maybe bid you could rely on, this, if you assume like those, but, even, but some want to make a distinction between night and day, that if you forget it at night, you should certainly go back because there's no din at night. And during the day, there's a further discussion, you know, in terms of that. But generally, again, because it's, it revolves on the same issue, whether you say you have to have a suda today. So Rosh Chodesh, do you have to have a chiyav today of having a suda? So again, it's preferable to have a suda as Rosh Chodesh, However, it's not mandatory. One does not have, one doesn't have an obligation of having uh, suda with bread, albeit it's recommended and praiseworthy, but since you're not obligated to the effort, the luck is if one forgot Yalo V'yavo at benching, one would not repeat. In contrast to, let's say, Shabbos, we forgot what say. So if salvation raised an interesting question, what happens in a case where you have to go back? Let's say, one of your first two Shabbos meals on Yantiv. Let's say you had a Zeman, three people got together, you did the Rabbi Sai de Barach, and then all three you forgot Ritze, or um, a case of Yalav Yavo on Yantiv. So the luck is the case where you have to go back. That's the, the case where um, you can make up any hypothetical. The case is you all three have to repeat benching now. He says you have to repeat Zeman also. Do you have to go back and do the Rabbi Sa'id and Barak again, or just go back to Barak oh. I would say just a prayer. What's the issue? What's in the kuda here, whether you do or you don't? Oh, it ties into what we were discussing yesterday. The question is, we said, how do we view, or today for that, how do, today, how do we view a Shemona Esrei without Yalo V'yavo? Today, Shacharis Mincha, we dive in Shemona Esrei, we leave out Yalo V'yavo. We have to go back, but the question is, why do you have to go back? Do you have to go back because it's like you didn't dive in Shacharis and Mincha at all? Oh no, I got credit for Shacharis and Mincha. I'm lacking the Chi of Haskara. And I, since I can't do it in a vacuum, they said I have to put it back. So that's why I have to go back. Not because I have to dive in Shacharis again, it's because I have to fulfill my special mention of Rosh Chodesh. So the Rav said it's the same issue here. How do you view a, a Birka Samazim without a Ritzay, without a Yalav a Yavo? in a case where you have to do it. So he says, is it like you didn't bench at all? Or is it like, I got credit for benching, I'm lacking in the Zeman. The Rav concluded the latter, that you got credit for benching, you just lack, you, did, you, just, um, you just were lacking in the Yalo V'yavo, and therefore one would not do another Zeman again. You already fulfilled your mitzvah Birkas HaMazan already. You just lacking the special Chi of Haskara of Ritzay or Yalo V'yavo, and then you just have to, and really, hypothetically, uh-huh. you could just take out a sitter and say a ritzay, but since you can't do that, Chazal said you must do ritzay in the context of the benching, or the Shemon Esre, or Yalav Yavo, and therefore the only reason you have to go back is to be able to fulfill your mitzvah of Baruch Hashem Yom Yom, the mitzvah of giving special mention to every tefillah, and sometimes to benching, you know, in, in, in the context of the tefillah. So he says, you, so you, in a case, so obviously Rosh Chodesh wouldn't be a question because you don't have to go back at all, but in a case of a Yantav or a Shabbos, but you all forgot Ritzay or the Yalo Yavo, you wouldn't have to do another Zima because you got credit for benching, you just lacking in the Chi of Haskara. Right. Thank you.